I've always wanted a wall-mounted PC case. I have seen other creators design their own, either by building from metal or repurposing existing cases. These designs are great, but usually require tools or equipment that I don't have. My other option was to buy a custom one-off case from Etsy, but these can kind of cost up to $300 or more. While trying to decide what to do, I started to realize that these cases are actually pretty simple designs. With the knowledge that I already knew about 3D printers and the bit of designing experience I have, I decided to try to make my own wall-mounted PC case using a 3D printer. So where do I start? Well, the first things first is measurements, baby. I spent some time measuring the motherboard, fans, and power supply mount. After collecting all of the measurements I needed, it was time to start designing. Since I'm not super experienced with CAD software, I used a beginner's friendly program that I found called Tinkercad. And honestly, it gets the job done for the most part. I begin designing a case that can hold a CPU, AIO, water cooler, a power supply, and hopefully mount the GPU sideways. The first design I came up with was fairly simple and functional. I made sure that there was space to properly mount it on the wall and tried to ensure that all the screw holes would line up correctly to avoid any issues later on. Once the design was done and I got ready to print it, I hit my first roadblock. The printer bed was too small to print the case in one piece. So I had to go back and cut the model into multiple separate pieces. Now that it's in pieces, I needed a way to align everything perfectly while I was putting it together. I considered a few different options. Option one, glue everything together with Gorilla Glue. Option two, create some sort of kind of mechanism to align all the pieces up correctly. Option three, weld the plastic together using a soldering iron. I didn't want to do this because I did it with a mask and the fumes kind of got everywhere and made me very sick because I wasn't wearing a mask. Whoops. In the end, I went with a mixture of option one and two. Designed some small holes into each piece so I could insert filament to help align everything. Then I used super glue to secure each section in place. With that figured out, it was time to start printing. I used my old Ender Free, which now lives on at someone else's house, for the initial prototype. It took a little over one week to print all the pieces. Once everything was done, I removed all supports and started putting it together. The alignment method using the filament in the small holes actually worked pretty well. But in hindsight, the entire case was too thin and flimsy. I underestimated how thick and strong it needed to be. After all, this isn't metal, it's plastic. I need to rethink the design and make it more durable. I also ran into two major flaws with the print. First, the power supply placement was too close to the motherboard, making cable management nearly impossible. Second, I had to upgrade to a larger AIO cooler, which didn't fit in the original design. I got it on Prime Day. So I took what I liked from the original design and went back to the drawing board. The first change I made was increasing the size of the entire case. I moved the radiator mount from the right side to the top and added extra fan mount to support a larger radiator. I also relocated the power supply to where the radiator used to be, which gave me a lot more space to work with. I added more cable management holes, especially around the PSU and fans. I even added mounts for hard drives or SSDs behind the case for future expendability. And this is the final design. It looks pretty damn good, but we won't know how well it works until we print it. So let's get started. This time I upgraded to the newer Ender Free V3 SE, which gave me slightly faster printer times. I also increased the infill percentage from 10% to 80 to help improve the strengths. Once again, I had to cut the model into multiple pieces, but I'll leave it up to you guys how you want to split it up. Printing all the pieces took about seven days and six hours. After printing, I spent a while removing all the supports. There were a lot, and I mean a lot and I begin the putting together process. Instead of using alignment holes this time, I spent extra time making sure everything was lined up properly before gluing it all together. But just as I was getting ready to glue the last piece together, I noticed something strange. The last piece was tilted. 
that's when I realized part of my case was slightly warped because my 3D printer had slowly loosened some of the screws over time. And of course, I didn't notice that. It led to a misaligned print. After tightening all the screws back down, I reprinted the last two pieces and they came out great. Perfectly straight and accurate, unlike some of the others. Once I had everything lined up properly, I used an absolute ton of super glue to ensure everything held together properly. The reason why I chose super glue over plastic welding or creating a complex connecting system is because it's simple, cheap, and easy to use. And honestly, it can be just as strong as plastic itself. With everything assembled, I moved on to the final steps. I decided that I would like to sand down the case to give it a better look. So I used a rotating sander with 300 grit sandpaper to smooth everything out, followed up by 600 grit for a fine finish. Since we sanded it down, I wanted to paint it all one color so it looked nice on the wall. But before we start painting, I wanted to install the motherboard standoff screws using a solder and iron. Then I painted the entire case using a high temp metal black spray paint, normally used for cars, which gave it a much cleaner look. No more different colored prints. It's all one color, matte black baby. Now it's time to put together our PC. I started with the motherboard. I placed it on top of the standoffs and that's when I noticed another mistake. When I redesigned the second iteration of the case, I didn't realize the motherboard section had shifted. The printed screw holes no longer lined up. So I removed the standoffs, lined them up directly with the motherboard, and re-soldered them in place. To fill in the old holes, I melted some filament using the soldering iron. Then I also realized the cutout for the motherboard IO shield was wrong. So I just chopped that section off entirely. Now that everything is fixed or best it can be, it's time to finish this build. For specs, I'm using a MSI Mag B550 motherboard paired with an AMD Ryzen 7 5700X3D. For RAM, I went with the T-Force Delta DDR4 32 gigs clocked at 3600 MHz. As for the GPU, I'm using an NVIDIA RTX 2080 that I had laying around, although I do plan on upgrading in the future. Cooling the CPU is a Cooler Master 360 liter cooler AIO, which I got on Prime Day for a hell of a deal. And for storage, I'm running two one terabyte M.2 drives, which I both got a great deal on. That's why I'm not going as a two terabyte. I have two separate drives. Yes, this, this is unnecessary, but it's what I went with. Since this is a custom case, I needed a way to power it on. I picked up a single blue switch power button, which has RGB lighting which looks great and adds some flavor. The last thing I needed was a PCIe extension. At first, I bought a super cheap one off Amazon for about 25 bucks, and this caused me a lot of weird issues. After troubleshooting, I realized the extension was to blame. So I looked around the internet and I picked up this Corsair Prime extension, which worked, but it was unfortunately too big for the case. It was a 300 millimeter where I needed a 200. So I returned it and I finally landed on a Firmatec 200 millimeter PCI extension. And this one works great. Once the build was complete, I mounted it on the wall. I had already pre-made the mounting holes using a soldering iron on the case. Upstairs, I lined it up on the drywall and pre-placed the screws and got it secured down. And here it is. This thing looks amazing. It came out super clean and I'm very proud of how it looks. But the problems don't end. I ran into another issue. The computer wouldn't boot. I tried removing the RAM, changing the slots, unplugging the GPU, even taking off the CPU cooler to reinsert the processor to see if that was the culprit. Nothing worked. I even slightly unscrewed the motherboard thinking maybe I had flexed it in a weird way. Eventually, I realized it was the PCI extension was bent too much. I straightened it out and finally the PC booted. Like I said earlier, the PCI extension can be the source of many weird and strange problems. And I didn't catch it until later in the build. Hence why I replaced it with the Firmaltake version. 
a better quality one and it actually works. So in the end, this is our build and honestly, I think it looks amazing. The matte black with a little bit of white in the RGB from the components really pulls everything together. Designing and building this case was far from easy. I ran into a bunch of unexpected problems, but that's part of the process. If you're going to make mistakes, you might as well do it while you're learning, especially when you built something you've never done before, you're going to make mistakes. As for the performance of the build I built this computer, it's solid. I've been averaging over 200 FPS in most games. And the biggest limitation right now is that GPU. I plan to upgrade to something like an RX 7800 XTX or whatever makes sense when that time comes. From a thermal perspective, the open air design works wonders. Temp stay very low, nothing overheats, and everything runs smooth. That was one of my main concerns during the design phase. Looking back, I probably should have used a more heat resistive filament. I printed the case in base PLA, which is versatile, but there's still better materials out there like PETG or ABS that can handle higher temperatures and stress better. If you made it this far, thank you. The link to the 3D print will be in the description. And hopefully by the time this video goes live, I have made a few improvements to the design so it'll be easier for you to print it and assemble it yourself. Overall, I'm incredibly proud how this turned out. This was a dream come true. I built my own PC case. Sure, it's not perfect. And I know I will continue improving it over time, but for now, I love it. It looks so good on my wall next to my desk. This is gonna be my gaming setup for the time being. Moving forward, I'll keep posting updates as I tweak and redesign the case. I want to keep this project alive as long as I can, and if this video does well, I might even turn it into a series. I'm also planning to design a custom NAS case in the future, but that's a project for another day. For now, this is what I built, and I've been absolutely loving this thing. It looks amazing. I have to, I've been showing all my friends, I'm like, hey guys, I built this. Now, this is what stuff I didn't like so much. Uh, one, that the case is cricket. Um, a little bit. It's a little bit cricket. It needs a little bit of improvements. I plan on remaking it again once I get a bigger printer, which hopefully will be pretty soon. And of course, the glue spots. Now, I didn't sand it down good enough to really get a smooth finish which I regret dearly because it wouldn't make the case look even better. But honestly, that's my only gripes. My only disappointment was this build. And that brings us to the end of the video. If you guys like this, please give me a like, comment if you have any sort of ideas or improvements I could make to the case. I would love to do that. Uh, especially hearing people's ideas will help me hopefully understand it and improve the case. That's my plan, is to overall improve this case design and start selling it maybe. But that's a future project, but we're here now. Again, give it a like. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a good one. Peace out.